Hey guys, so this is the dog I was talking about. She is a puppy, very young, uh, much smaller in person. I saw her while walking my dog, Norman, and right now it is a tropical storm in Houston. It is raining pretty much every day for the next four days. I, did, I went out to look for her, but I couldn't find her. I'm hoping someone took her in. She just walks around my neighborhood, and I'm very, very afraid. And I think she was dumped. Uh, my neighborhood is one of the better neighborhoods in this area, and we do have lots of pets that are dumped, both cats and dogs. I work with an organization to try to find them homes, but fostering a dog I, is really difficult. Um, because they have fleas, they have ticks, they have heartworms, they have uh, hookworms. The cost is just insane. My vet is she's a wonderful woman and she does everything at cost for me, but the bills still are insane. And I just adopted a cat. So I will, if you guys have suggestions on what to do, I'm more than happy to try to look for her. I am a little concerned because it is going to rain really hard over the next few days. You know, especially a puppy like, so this is my neighbor. This little girl has been stray for a while now. If you can place water and food out for her, I am sure she needs it. I try to get close to her and she is very skittish. Won't let anyone too close. She covers the entire Fall Creek. So she just like runs and runs and runs and... Um, I'm really good with dogs, so even uh, Snowy, the pre one of the fosters that was running from everyone, uh, it's because Norman's such a friendly dog. So the dog comes out to Norman to smell him. Okay, so now I'm going to go into a serious topic of another type of animal, which is snakes. So when you... There's, a I think, a Chinese tale where a... A person, a snake is dying, it's in the snow and it's freezing to death. And the backpacker comes across the snake. I don't know if it's a Chinese tale. It might be a different culture's tale. And I think actually it's an African tale. I must have read it a long time ago. And the snake is dying. And the traveler says, okay, if I put you in my backpack, will you bite me? And the snake says, no. So the traveler, being the kind-hearted person, puts the snake in his backpack. Once the snake is all warmed up and cozy and feels comfortable, he immediately bites the traveler. And the traveler will ask, why did you bite me? I saved your life. And the snake says, I'm a snake. So what is happening here is I know Tasty he doesn't like me. I don't like him. I'll just say that in the beginning. I think a lot of the videos he's made that I've seen, the most recent video that he's complaining about is he made a video about the mana source and how we should donate to him, which I believe too. And you guys know, you guys give me all types of, many times you won't agree with me, but we can still have a conversation. I'm not going to rail on you guys. I'm not going to. I think the conversation's interesting. So he is anti Jeremy now because, well, let me go back to the beginning. He was one of Jeremy's biggest supporters, and Jeremy used to post his videos all the time. And that's how he became a larger YouTube, a larger YouTube in our community. That's how he did it, was he piggybacked off Jeremy. He piggybacked off drama. In particular, he piggybacked off drama involving Wedge. So now that Wedge is in the hospital and it's trendy to say support Wedge, he has put all the negative comments. So he posted a video about Wedge. And in that video, he says something very ironic. I haven't watched the video, but it isn't a comment, so I assume he said it, which is saying that I would donate money, but I don't have money right now. 
<laughs> yeah. Okay, I'll stop there. One of the surprising parts about this is he turned on Jeremy. And he's blaming Jeremy for the toxic attitude of his audience. And I'll show you some of their comments, and they're not nice. But some of my the comments on my video are not nice, but I'm not going to back down. I'm not going to blame someone else for the user. He's blaming Jeremy for putting his users on this video to talk bad about WEDs. When if you historically look at his relationship with Jeremy and Weds, it's insane. And I'm sure that he'll make a video response because attention is attention is attention. And that's what you have. Like, I will be very frank with you. I don't get along with other YouTubers. I just don't. For everyone who thinks I'm a it's Q supporter, I'm not. And if you watch my videos, you know that. I feel like that in this community, there's absolutely no loyalty. It's just a bunch of snakes. And no matter what you do, a lion will be a lion and a snake will be a snake. So this is what is said. I guess everyone heard it here. If you criticize someone and people agree with you, then you must be controlling what they think with your influence since it's obvious they didn't make up their own minds to agree with you. You guys make your own decisions. And I'm fine with it. Not, I mean, there are people who watch my video within the first minute they thumbs down the video. I'm sure that if you get to one of these videos early enough, you'll be like, why are there five thumbs down? when the video has been uploaded two minutes ago. I'm okay with that. That's just the nature of my channel. But I don't blame you guys. I don't blame my subscribers. This is part of life. You have to grow a tough skin. Like, you know what employees I love the most and what employees go to furthest in any company? Uh, we had Amy. Amy was at this company. You may have saw some videos, not probably on this channel, but on the previous channel. And she was tough as nails. She could take criticism because she was running social media for Energy Day. And she took criticism. You know where she works right now? She works at T-Mobile. An absolute success. She had free associate degrees from a community college. And now she works as a social media manager at T-Mobile. I feel great for her, but she took criticism because if you manage a bunch of dealerships, people are going to say, oh, you sell me a lemon, you sell me a lemon. If you manage ERs, oh, it's so expensive. It's, if you manage social media, people will put negative reviews all the blank. That's how people are. Very few people leave a positive review in certain industries I'm in, and everyone leaves a negative review. Because there's no reason, if you did have a positive experience, you probably forgot that. If you had a negative experience, it sticks in your mind and you want to hurt the company somehow. So you leave them a Google review or a Yelp review or a Facebook review. You got to be tough. You have to be tough. And that is the best lesson I can teach anyone. Life is so unfair. My life is far from perfect. Um, I have anti, I don't, it's not anti-social. I can be social when I want to be, but for the most part, it seems like work. I'd rather sit behind a computer and do what I do, PPC and SEO. I'd rather do those two and develop websites than go to a gala. I get invited to so many galas. <laughs> Going to a gala is more work than actually working for me. And that's just been my personality all my life. I think it's because of, I don't know, I, I love animals, but I really, I don't know like how can I explain it. I can tolerate humans and I can put up an act really well. So it seems like I'm interested in what you're saying. 
I could do this for many hours, but it's so much work. With animals, like, the reason that, like, what my friend who's a vet, and I volunteer at animal shelters all the time, and one thing you're going to learn is your personal pet, depending on how happy they are, is a reflection of how you are as a human being. Because when everyone goes home, how do you treat your dog? How do you treat your cat? How do you treat your ferret? So I adopt and foster many animals. They come in scared. They come in abused. They come in afraid to even, you know, get a pet. Because to them, a human reaching towards them, they're not trying to pet them. They're trying to hit them. That's just the reality of it. Norman has never been, he's been, mis, he's been misbehaving. And, you know, I treat him with respect and I never hit him. Never. And he's done some pretty bad stuff, but that's not how I treat him. I treat him, you know, I give him a hug before he goes to bed at night. Like, so back to snakes. No matter how friendly the snake, no matter what the snake does, and no matter what you do for the snake, a snake will always be a snake. It's just a matter of time. Anyway. Bye.